Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA. So let's start. Base. We are back here again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gamers all around the world. Welcome back to actually the final episode in this little side series that we were doing where we answered all of the most wanted requests on the 2K forum list. I think that this list pretty much exemplifies what we hope to see in the next rendition of a WWE game. We can only hope. But um, Dan, how are you feeling thus far? We only, we're only we down to our last 12 items. Overall, just brief opinion. How do you feel about everything that we've talked about so far? It's been a trip. It's been a it's been an adventure because there there was a lot to go over and uh, some good and some eh. So I don't know. I'm 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 vaguely optimistic uh, with everything that we've uh, discussed and heard and seen, but we'll see uh, when the time rolls around how it all plays out. Yeah, and actually, fun fact, today I saw a post stating that Patrick Gilmore, the um, what was he, the vice president, that he was actually, he had opened up a forum for a Q&A over Reddit, and it said, you can, mm-hmm. a- you can ask me any question you want. I didn't really look into what questions were asked or what answers were given, but I will say this, I feel like this year, for the first time in a very long time, because of this Patrick Gilmore guy, they're a lot more interactive, where as opposed to in previous years, they would give you a forum or they would ask you a question or ask for your votes, but then you would just kind of get radio silence until release when you had to play the game, and from there you would be able to see if they implemented what was wanted or if they didn't. So Yeah, I'd like to think that this will be, um, at, at the very least, a catalyst for them if not, if, if other companies don't also look at this sort of thing and go, hey, actually engaging with our fan base might be a good plan. And then you see, start to see more game companies reach out and say, what features do you want so they can tailor make their games? But specifically in this situation, I think it was it was absolutely necessary given the fact that it almost felt like 2K had no idea where the hell they should be going with the uh, with the series. Yeah, um, I think that their next release, which would have been 2K21 in just a few short months, would probably not have been anything too far off from 2K20, personally, in my opinion. Yeah, it would have been bad. It, yeah, it would have been very bad. So, um, and yeah, like you said, I wouldn't mind if they actually implemented this, you know, to have the forum list. And maybe in, in upcoming years, it could be a little bit more brief. I don't think you would want to ask the fans, what do you want to see in regards to roster? What do you want to see in regards to career mode? I think that if you give them a good wink-wink base on 2K22, then I think that the that the list... For the upcoming year is probably going to be a whole lot more shorter if they deliver for this particular game. Yeah, because then you, you then really should just hopefully be making micro adjustments to fine tune features that, like when when we get, <laughs> I'm, I'm at this point banking on it because otherwise they're going dis- to disappoint a lot of people. Um, if they roll out the general manager mode, there's and it's a bad mode then they would need to go in and they'd need to tweak things. Well, I don't want to say if, if the mode is bad, but if we go in and there's certain things that don't really fly, don't really work, um, then they should listen to tweaks for that and then revamp, like, remodify that mode to uh, make, it, make it better. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, living in the age where game patches is a very prominent thing, that could also be used to your advantage, where if the game comes out and if you thought that something would be convenient and the fans tell you, hey, maybe you should change, just just tweak this one thing, then you would be able to do so thanks to the um, ability to do patches. So, yeah, one can only hope, but like I said, uh, 
on that list that we've been going through. And if you want to join us from the beginning of this list, the whole playlist for BA Select Start is on my channel. So go ahead and check that out because we are only down to the last 12 items here on this 49 uh, item compiled list. And so the first one here, I mean, we basically addressed this last time. If, if you want, we can give uh, quick remarks. Shared community creations. We talked about this last time about PlayStation 4 crossing over into the Xbox world and vice versa. Um, I will just say this. Right now, community creations on PlayStation, which is the platform that I play on and that you play on, Dan, it's, it's very sophisticated, it's very complex, it's very dynamic, it's filled with, you can pretty much find any logo wrestler that you want. So if the crossover is not implemented, it's not going to be a deal breaker for me. If it's there, okay, more power to the game, but if it's not, life goes on. Yeah, that's basically what we talked about last time, is that regardless of what system you're on, you tend to still have a pretty solid pool to draw from. Uh, will it maybe open the door for a, a little bit of greater variety? Sure, because there may be some really talented uh, creators over on the Xbox who are doing a better job at certain, certain superstars than uh, our PS4 community, and then you can scoop those up too. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, you scour through the available stuff and you take what you want and you leave what you don't. It's, it's still a pretty, pretty, uh, thorough pool to draw from. Yeah. But I will say this one thing that we failed to mention was it seems like in 2k 20, the community creations wasn't working properly where you would download a wrestler and then, like, there was the infamous example, I don't know if you've seen it, with Cain Velasquez, where someone actually did a pretty good job of creating Cain Velasquez in his attire. And then when you would download it and you would go to look at it, the face imaging that was used to, to uh, plaster Cain Velasquez's face onto the model is completely removed. So you're getting, like, default face number one instead of Cain Velasquez's face. I hadn't heard about that, now. Yeah, so, I mean... It, if we can get community creations up to par again and leave it that way, I'm fine with it. But again, if we can have crossover community creations, that would also be cool too. Yeah. Uh, second item here, it says tournament mode. I, I mean, because I know that there are a few tournaments available in the game. There is the... What is it? Is it the Dusty Roads tournament, and then there's the Tag Team tournament, and there's King of the Ring? Um, I don't really know what this is in regards to. Maybe, maybe what people are talking about is implementing more features in these tournament modes. I don't know, but um, I usually really don't do tournaments. I just here and there if I want to have some fun. But um, yeah. I usually stay away from tournaments. I was never much of a tournament type of person. But uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, the thing, like as far as tournaments go, I, if we're being entirely honest, I'm going to draw a comparison between uh, this and, and Supercard. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be quite the same thing, but you've got the King of the Ring uh, mode in Supercard, which is a tournament tournament based mode and you have to throughout gameplay or by paying which i don't think is how they would do it in how they would do it in 22 uh, but you have to like earn energy to reach to, to restore the stamina on your on your cards and if you don't you're essentially set up for for failure yeah because uh, i i feel like i can count on uh, i can count on two hands how many times I've actually been the king of the ring because I miss one round of, uh, of stamina recharge. And then the guy, the guy I'm fighting just happens to do it. And I, I get screwed. Yeah. It's not like something that you, that, that's always an even playing field. Uh, I also, with all due respect, don't, I, I don't like playing against people. <laughs> in a, in something like that, just because you'll have 
the extremely good people every once in a while, unless they, I don't know how they would gauge it uh, on, like, skill level in, in a wrestling game. But I I wouldn't want to be in, in a tournament and just get knocked out in the first round because the person I'm playing is just astronomically better than me. That would be, right. that would be disappointing. Because then you're wasting time. I would rather, if there's going to be some sort of tournament thing built into the game, that it be you versus a bunch of AIs, and there's some sort of prize at the end, like an unlockable or an alternate costume or something. Yeah. Like, that That would even be a cool way to implement those those minor updates. It's like if you do, like, a, oh, community event, here's, a, here's a, a, new, a new tournament, and it's all ladder matches or, some, or something. And uh, if you end up winning your tournament and treat it essentially like the million dollar tower where um, you can you can play as much as you want, but it, or you can play as many times as needed. And if you win the tournament, you get the most recent outfit for uh, Seth Rollins, or you get the the I don't know. Pfft. Yeah, new costumes. Yeah, small small updates, and it's it's something you can pretty easily implement into the game to mm, keep it fresh. Yeah, I think that we've mentioned that a few times. Is that having innocent unlockables like that be sort of plastered throughout modes of the game, so that it's like it gives the player a little bit more incentive to actually try out the mode and try to get through it. So, yeah, that would be good, but in no way do I want this to turn into what they've been doing with career mode, where you play a little bit, you get, you know, some money, then you have to get the loot packs, and you get parts, and you have to unlock a tire like that. Don't do that. What I would do, and I know last time you were talking about keeping up with the arenas, so for example, uh, the game just came out, right? Oh, complete the King of the Ring Tower and get the Money in the Bank 2020 Arena. You know, something like that. Um, not, oh, play this mode for 13 hours and we'll, and we'll throw you a bone. Don't make it anything like that because nobody's going to do that. I think I told you they did the Roman Reigns Tower. I played that thing first match within 20 seconds. I was bored and I just I turned it off because I, I didn't want to do it. So I would yeah, say... I mean- I mean, the the execution of it matters too because uh, it's one of those things where if I was a, if I was playing the game and it was like a limited uh, limited release thing, yeah. Um, I, first of all, I wouldn't want it to be like impossible, <laughs> like make it a little bit of a challenge. But still, I should be able, I should be able to do it even even if I'm a, one of your lay players, yeah, like a lay, and. Uh, if, uh, if, like, you can treat it, I, I keep coming back to Injustice because I think it ha- that Injustice has a lot of good execution on things that normally you wouldn't really think about. But they have the, the what is it called? The multiverse thing that I think I brought up once before yes. during the. But the events will, they'll last, I don't know, two days, 16 hours, five days. Whatever, and so you've got that time frame to try and beat it. Now, if you don't beat it, it goes away for a while, but it will come back. So either have the have the different tournaments continue to be available, or have it on a rotating cycle, so that even if in this time frame I'm not good enough to beat uh, a 16 man tournament of ladder matches, maybe next time I will be. Yeah. I'm very quickly going to bring this up before we move forward. So, how familiar are you, Dan, with Shut Your Mouth and Here Comes the Pain? Um, I haven't played them in a long time, but I I played them a lot when they were were current. Okay. Um, Because I felt like, in particular, those two games, not that all every other game was bad, but in these two particular games, I felt like, when you would play the season mode, so I remember in Shut Your Mouth, when you would start doing a season mode, let's say your first pay-per-view is the Royal Rumble. So when you would go to Royal Rumble and you would complete your match, 
at the end of the match, it would it would this window would come up. It would go oh Royal Rumble pay per view unlockables, and you had like five different items to choose from. It would be for example alternate gear for Hulk Hogan or Backlash Arena or something yeah. like that. And the I way that. and and the way that it would work was you had to play a full year of season mode. You had to come back around to the Royal Rumble pay per view again. And then they would give you the remaining five or four items that were still there. And then once again, you can go through and pick whichever one you want to unlock. So I just, with that example, I just personally feel like back then their execution of, oh, you want to unlock this? Well, you got to do that. You want to unlock that? You got to do this. I felt like there was a, a, a much better moderation of like gameplay time and unlockable stuff. And it seems like over the last few years, that's been at a very much imbalance where it's, oh, play 20 hours and here's an alternative alternative gear for Braun Strowman. It's like, okay, that's it. So, again, uh, I would say pay close attention to balancing that so that it's decent amount of gameplay and decent amount of unlockable content. Um, next thing that we have here is, and again, we've talked about this, new weapons. We talked about it before, and I know you said, Dan, how in 2K20, especially if you get the Bump of the Night and the DLC packs, there is all these new, uh, extraordinary out there weapons that you can unlock. Uh, I know I brought up the other time, I wouldn't mind a, a create a weapon mode where you can go take like a steel chair change the color of it, make it look fresh, or make it look dented, or uh, add a barbed wire around it, something like that, like a very small little mode for create a weapon. Um, put, a, put a symbol or something on it. Exactly, yes. Because, um, uh, uh, again, I feel like when it comes to weapons, like especially when you want to have like an extreme rules match, outside of a table, ladder, kendo, baseball bat, and chair... That's pretty much all you have. You don't really have anything else. I remember back in the day, we used to have crutches. We used to have 2x4s. We used to have 2x4s with barbed wire, uh, trash can, trash can lids. We used to have all these weapons. And for whatever reason, going back to your point, you've alluded to this multiple times. If you had it in the game, why take it out? So... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty much beating a dead horse because I've said this before, but what are your sentiments? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting uh, I, idea because I, I think that it's one, of, it's one of those more underrated things or those things you don't necessarily uh, consider that having more of a variety because I feel like up until, up until this year, for the most part, you had... What, like seven things? Table, ladder, chair, kendo stick, sledgehammer. Baseball bat. Baseball bat. And like that was about that was it. it. Yeah. And so just like 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 we said, even if you put in uh the 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 ring bell or the um stop sign or any 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 other fun stuff. It's that's all it is. It's just fun. Um, you could, like, I, I don't think they would get graphic, but yeah, like you could bring back a ran, a regular two by four, a two by four with barbed wire, lettuce, customized stuff. Yeah. Any of the weapons that have been put into the original head. Uh, <laughs> what about, I, I even Mommy. thought about this, sorry to cut you off, but I thought about this as you were saying the ring bell. I, again, we, t- I, I've said it how today's games need to be like a lot more interactive. I wouldn't mind if you're tearing apart the announce table. You can maybe use, like, the cover, like, the top lid of the announce table or even the monitors. Or, like, if if, yeah. if the announcers have an iPad, you can grab that and just, you know, chuck it across to your opponent. Stuff like that. Yeah. Just, just have stuff on the table that then you can use. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's just – it's a nice elemental thing that – you kind of take for granted until until you're in a situation like this where you're like, new weapons, huh? I guess we do only have six. So, yeah, keep it fresh. Yeah. Um, next thing we have. Ta- I don't know how many times I've said keep it fresh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Um, 
Next one that we have here, I, I don't know what this is in regards to, but it says gaming stability. I mean, we can honestly probably skip this one because I'm not totally sure either, but I would say maybe it's stuff like what I was talking about with the Tyler Breeze glitch. Yeah. Maybe they just mean uh, making sure that the game can handle the stress that it's under. Because it was li- literally fine the entire match. It handled me going up the ladder, doing the mini game. I got to do my uh, victory pose, and then uh, I would hit start or option or whatever it was to get the exit menu to come up, and it would pause for a second and then give me an error message that the game crashed. Mm. And for that to happen every time up until the, the last time I played that match um, is obnoxious. Because what you're gonna you're gonna hang <laughs> a mediocre uh, extra character in the form of Pilgrim Rusev in front of me, and then the mode's not even gonna let me finish the tower. Right. Yeah, I I will just say this in regards to gaming stability. Make it as close to two K nineteen as you can, because two K nineteen stability was actually pretty good. I, yeah, I don't. I don't remember having any real issues with nineteen. Exactly. So I mean, if we're talking about gaming stability, just make it two K nineteen, or if you can't even make it better, go for it. But that's pretty much it. Um. Uh. Again. This is going to be repetitious, but branching story mode. We've talked about this. Um, You would really have to put in a lot of hours to create a branching story and to have each scenario stretch out into its respective storyline. But again, creator story mode was the second item on this list, which I think just tells you. Uh, I'm even okay that if you bring this mode back, if you just literally take it from 2K14, you just literally copy and paste it over. I have absolutely no problem with it because just having that mode in there gave you extra replay value. So. Yeah. Now, what I'll say on this one, and I, I'm pretty sure I brought this game up a couple of times before also, um, but Detroit Become a Human. Yes. Uh, that's the point of the game. Yeah. Or even, even the game Until Dawn. Yeah. is certain things influence the direction in which the story goes, and you've got multiple endings. Yes. Even if you, uh, even if it's just one, like one career mode, like because we were talking about, oh, have a different career mode for each player type, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Even if it's one story mode, but you have a couple of bre- breaking off points that then steer you toward different endings, and you've got, eight different endings you can get that alone is replayability yeah i think that's probably what they're referring to here is just like or just four like if you had four endings four different ways to end the story that's still going to be plenty for people they're going to go oh dang i can play through four different times and get four different conclusions hell yeah yeah because i think that as of recent years to have the linear stories that we've been getting, which hasn't been bad, but if there's ever an option of getting an alternate ending or make this option, make that option so that you can get to this ending, it's it's a pretty cool feeling as opposed to, oh, everybody got the same ending. Okay, hooray, let's go back to exhibition mode. So Yeah, just like even, even going and referring back to 20, um, you have the, the moment, spoiler alert, where Red takes the trophy to the face yeah. and she has like she has the eye patch, that could that that's a significant enough moment that that can send the story off into two two distinctly different uh, paths. Yes, and it, it's not. I don't want to brandish it as a missed opportunity because it probably wasn't what they were going for, but it was. It's a missed opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, um, again, I I will quickly bring it up, shut your mouth, and here comes the pain did an excellent job of doing that. There were, even though after a while when you played, and after a while, I mean like after like two or three years when you would play, you would be like, oh, I remember this storyline, or oh yeah, now it's throwing me into this storyline, I remember what happens here. But there was still enough for you to constantly go back to those games. I don't know what it was, but just being in that story all the little decisions that you would make. Some of them would immediately affect the story. Others wouldn't. 
But, um, yeah, I don't know. Is there, 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 I hate to say it, but there was a certain magic to those games that I just I think has been lost as we've progressed to where we are now. So, but, um, yeah, um, actually, this next one, not too far off, it says season mode. Um, again, I, I'm guessing this is referring to just making improvements, making a branching story mode, um, just making it entertaining and engaging as opposed to, as we've talked about it before, starting off in NXT, impressing the judges, getting a contract, being on WWE, going for the championship. Uh, I even talked about it. I will plug it one more time. I wouldn't mind if there was like a championship mode where you start off as the champion, so you're already at the highest of highs, and now you have to deal with people coming up to you, challenging you, jumping you from behind, trying to get underneath your skin, manipulating you. Um, and it, it's almost like your decisions affect what the computer does, and, that, and depending on what they do, that's going to affect your decisions one more time. So um, much like how you were saying about Detroit Become Human, it would almost be like the reverse of that, where you make a decision and then now the computer has a whole bunch of options that it can go through and it's going to select one at random and it's going to go with that. So that's what I would do for a new and improved season mode. Yeah. I mean, kind of like you said, I think at this point we're kind of grasping at straws because most of the other relevant things have been said at this point. Yeah. And I think that when people are suggesting season mode, what they're asking for is, I think we can bl- blanket statement it as a better story mode. Yes. So if you're, whether it's career mode or season mode, um, they just want it to be good. <laughs> they want the physics to work. They want the story to be in, uh, compelling. They'd like to have more than one, more than one conclusion and more than one path to, to that conclusion. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I imagine people might even be fine if you have a single starting point, you branch out to like up to eight different things and then gradually you work back in toward one uniform ending, but you have all that stuff in the middle that you can go back and replay and try to hit different things. Yeah. Um, but, but I do think the concept of having multiple endings is, is a little bit more interesting because then it builds towards something. But either way, I think they're really just talking about a better story mode, and we've talked about that already. Yeah, um, one last thing that I'll throw out, and I don't, I don't think I, I've stated this since we started doing this list, is I know that some people might argue and say, oh, well, you know, the only reason why back in the day you got so many branching story modes is because uh, the wrestlers didn't have to go to a private booth and, and do voiceovers. It was all just text on screen. And I'll be honest... If getting multiple different branching stories means that they have to go back to text on screen, I'm okay with it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, You know, it's like uh, 2K20 and 2K19, had it not been their voices and just text on screen, okay. Like, I'd still be okay with it. I understand that in the year 2020, everything is... HD and good audio and surround sound and uh, it's got to be the full package but if we have to dial something back in order to get a better product I'm all for it I'm all for it submission gameplay um so I I personally want to ask you because I know that in the past you've stated that the submission system is not the best in the world actually it's not all that desirable if you could think of a new submission mini game, or if you if you would want to throw back to a, a a submission game from a past, a mini submission game from a from the past, uh, which one would you choose, or or what would you do to to have a better submission mini game? I think I you know what, um, Jim, I think it's good to always br- to start bringing in new video games to the to the to our conversations because <laughs> with, with all due respect to us, we've, we've been pretty, pretty limited uh, yeah. so far. Yeah. Um, but have you ever, have you ever played Pokemon stadium? I haven't. No. Okay. So in Pokemon stadium, they had uh, a mini game mode and there was, <laughs> I'm trying to remember how many games there were 
two, three on top, and like ten games. There were like ten different mini games, and um, they all had different uh, gameplay rules. And it was uh, there was one where you had to watch the color change, and you had to hit a specific button, and then if it changed, you had to switch buttons. And right. another that was like Simon says. Now there was one where there was magic harps. And, or no, no, no. The one I'm thinking of is the San, San True game. And so there's a game where you're playing as a uh, as a San True, and you're digging a hole, and you're trying to be the person to get to the the water first. Yeah. And the way that the game play on that one worked was that you had to alternate um, between the left and right triggers. Yeah. On the top of the controller. And so you had, it, it was basically like digging a hole. Is you'd hit one one trigger, and it would be your left hand scooping out dirt, and then you'd have to hit the right one to do the right hand, and if you screwed up the rhythm, then you screwed up your rhythm, right. and people would get would get ahead of you. Okay. And I think that instead of doing like a, a standard button mashing mode, or the, the weird, uh, oh, well, catch the catch the other color zone thing, I think if you switch over to a struggle system like that, where you have to hit the triggers in alternating fashion, uh, and if you screw up the rhythm, it kind of hurts your momentum. Right. And then there's increasing difficult, like, as you take more damage, it becomes more difficult for you to escape the move. I think that that's a more concise thing than either of the previous ones while still making it a challenge. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, so it's basically instead of, instead of doing the, the, the game where you have to watch the thing change or chase the thing, you just go to one simple mode where you just tap right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left over and over again in alternating fashion to try and fill a meter to get out of the move. Right. Yeah. Um, that's that's my suggestion. <laughs> yeah, um, I I will say this. I think a neat touch is that in recent years they give you the option of either the circle game or the button mashing sequence, which I feel like you know what, like I've always said, it's always good to have options as opposed to here is the mini game, whether you like it or not, boom. So. I think that if you can keep those in the game as well as implement new mini games, um, I think it's a win-win for everybody because then everybody yeah, just the, there will be some people who are experts of of the chase the chase the color, and other people who are masters of hit the hit the corresponding button. Yeah, but I think if you have one sort of generic, still challenging mini game. That is, is I think, because I think it's more intuitive that way. Because then, in the middle of gameplay, you don't have to shift your hold on the controller to be like, okay, well now I got a button mash square. Yeah. Or I still haven't figured out how to do it. I know you you kind of to- uh, coached me a little bit on how to do the other mini game, and I just can't click with it. So it, that limits me to then doing the button mashing one. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm pretty good at it uh, in, in, against the AI, but I've played against online opponents, and just the flow of chasing the color is different. Yeah. Um, so it's like there's that too. I, I think the AI just kind of falls into a rhythm, and maybe I just become immune to the rhythm. Um, but I got to warn you, even sometimes the AI gets me. Like, I'll be, I'll be okay and all of a sudden, especially if you're really damaged, the, the the color starts filling up a whole lot more faster. So you have to escape it. You got to think on your toes. Yeah. So, um, but no, yeah. If we can have maybe a third option for this next game, something along the lines of what you said, uh, a little bit more simpler than chasing the color. And like, I got to be honest, butt mashing is, it's not really my thing. Uh, because yeah. if I start doing it, then my thumbs and my fingers start hurting afterwards and they get sore. So if we can maybe have like something that's a little bit more of like, like a rhythmic thing like you talked about, uh, again, I think it's, it's much better for the mini game. So uh, very interesting because I know that they did this for uh, 2K18 and I think it was met with pretty negative reviews, but it says here... 
Nintendo Switch version. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know like if WWE games and Nintendo Switch go hand in hand. But all I remember is that for 2K18, uh, it, apparently the, the reviews were not that good. And uh, that's, that's why for 2K19 and 2K20, there was no Switch version for, for WWE 2K. Or was there? I, I, I don't remember, but I don't think there was. Okay. I am going to be honest. I don't remember how long the Nintendo Switch has been out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, there was a, yeah, there was a Switch version for, um, for 18. Um, I mean, it's a different, it's a different gameplay experience. I don't know how you would cater it because you would imagine that, uh, for the switch to really effectively play it, you'd be able to take off the little side piece, the the joy cons yeah. and use those independently as your controller and having so much flexibility on how exactly you approach the gameplay. is just a strange, strange thing to me for, these games specifically is to have a couple of different ways on any given system versus a fairly uniform gameplay experience. Yeah. But, uh, I, I would never want to, I would never want to say, no, we need to exclude somebody because if all you've got is the Nintendo switch, then by all means. But I think most people who play these games have one or the other of the Xbox or the PS4 at this point. Right, yeah, very good point. So, I don't have plus much... We're, plus, we're getting the 5 by the time the other one comes out. Very, very true, yeah, which I think that kind of becomes your selling point, is that if you have it for all these different platforms, again, I've said it before, that if there was ever a time to make that shift and take things to the next level, this has got to be your game, because I, I said it before, uh, after 2K20, 2K22 is going to be your make or your break. One of the two. So, um, this one here, uh, it says WWE 2K22 app. Um, it, it seems like this is in regards to like the, the face, the image uploading aspect of it. But, yeah. but if they were to give you additional features on, on like a, a 2K app, where you can, for example, you open up the app and you click on WWE 2K22. And if it, it had like alternate features on there, like I'm trying to think of something like, um, oh, um, using your phone, you can uh, do your own makeup for, for the female wrestlers. Or um, you could draw your own tattoo design and you can paste that into the game. Um, I think that would be really cool. Like if it had its own app and it, it allowed for you to like... Um, integrate new features that maybe are not a part of the game itself but if you if you have a phone an android an iphone or a smartphone you can like i said draw your own tattoo or uh, instead of waiting for someone in community creations to put a logo you can upload your own logo and paste it onto your game something like that yeah because i know in 19 i think it might be 19 i downloaded a yeah, it was 19. Downloaded a Captain Marvel yeah. uh, custom, and I went through and made a designed her jacket based on her jacket from the movie. And I, I the thing, the thing I'll say is I don't know that you necessarily need like an app per se, because of the fact that as far as I know, there's there's just sort of a website for you to do that stuff through right now. Yeah, but I will say this, last time when I uploaded an image and when I went to um, 2K19 and I tried to um, download the image that I uploaded, it said no image is found. So I don't know if it's maybe a bit buggy or whatever, because I know usually things, are, if you like put it into an app, it, it usually tends to work better, like technology-wise. But um, no, yeah. like It's, I, I, it's I, possible. Yeah, I mean, I know now they have the website, which is great, but I'm just speaking in terms of, like, if they want to take, the, like, their own personal app 
and just take it to the next level where they give you all these neat features. Because, like, um, I remember yeah. I remember in WWE 13 where you could, like, make your own logo. Like, you would literally have, like, a paintbrush and a pencil tool where you could do it. But it's, like, you had to use the, the thumbsticks. And sometimes you would want to do something and it wouldn't come out necessarily as good as you going on your phone and using, like, your fingertip to, to do it or to use, like, a like a, a pencil on your phone, like, uh, to do it. So, uh, again, if you could implement features like that into the app, I, I think it would be cool. But if not, again, not a deal breaker. Yeah. Um, this is interesting. Um, use WWE licenses. <clears throat> I don't... I don't recall this ever really being a problem, like... If someone had like a, a new logo or whatever, it 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 was it usually made it to the game, um, so I really don't know what this is in regards to or or what everybody's intentions are behind this one. Yeah, I don't know what that's uh, what that's calling for specifically. Um, it's one of those things where we we would have had to have gone through and actually checked what the, the, the yeah. comment would say. Yeah. Um, I don't like. I don't know if it's talking about like weird stuff. Like, oh well, WWE Studios did had something to do with this movie, so we should be able to implement things from from that movie. I don't know. Yeah. But um, or yeah, I don't. I don't know what what it's referring to. But I mean, I guess I agree. <laughs> If WWE has the license to something, maybe expand and use more of these things. Yeah, because, like, yeah, I, I don't know what this is in regards to or, or what. Because, like I said, like, pretty much if you go into, like, the, the logo section of when you're creating a superstar, uh, there is, like, a ton of logos there. Like, there, I don't want to say there's a surplus, but there is a decent amount if you're trying to create something. So I don't know if this is like get more logos or get logos from the past that are WWE licensed and put those in the game yeah. or um, I don't know what it's inferring. But um, second to last item here, we, we, we talked about this last time or the time before, custom crowd signs. Um, just have more signs because we talked about this, the I'm in HD or the Hi Mom or the best pay-per-view ever signs have been there for I think a decade now or maybe a little bit more and um, if we can have like a custom create um, your your own poster mode I think that would be really cool I know we kind of touched on that a little bit previously um, it's just one of, like one of those things like let me hit because I think that's that's really where the novelty of that would come in is this create a create a sign mode sort of stuff is that I remember back in the day when I was uh, how old was I when I was eleven years old preparing to go to a live Monday Night Raw event at, in downtown Detroit yeah and my sister. Uh, who was supportive of, at the time uh, of my habit because it was something I enjoyed. Uh, and this was before she started to chide me a little bit for being a wrestling fan uh, for, for her own personal reasons. Uh, but uh, she, she and I, especially because she went on to be, be an art teacher, um, she and I would sit down and we would work on, on signs and we would write stuff and uh, sometimes paste uh, images on the signs and it was um it was fun it was part of the experience and so i think having that that nostalgia factor of all right guys here like that could absolutely be something you do in the in the, the app if they roll one out yeah it you just give me a blank screen and you let me use my finger to write the words that i want and like you can <laughs> obviously you can have uh you can have some sort of uh, system where it like tries to image identify like vulgarities and it blocks those from being put in the game or something. Right. But you let me 
write what I want on the sign and design it how I want and then import that and then I can have that be connected to my person. And I think that's a small detail that they've probably never actually considered that I think the fans would actually get a huge kick out of. Yeah, and that's what I was referring to when I talked about the app is that, for example, if if you want to, just for example, if let's just say last night you took a selfie and you want to be able to import that selfie into the game, well, you can, for example, go to your photos to take that image, paste it into the app, maybe put like, you know, logos or, or writings, and then you can upload it into the game. And now all of a sudden your selfie from last night with all those alterations is in the game and somebody's, you know, hoisting it up. But again, yes, they would need to have sort of like a, a scanning system where it goes through the image and, okay, is there any anything that insinuates uh, uh, something that may be, you know... Uh, bad or inappropriate or whatever, uh, you would obviously need to have that. Um, so yeah, but if they can implement that again, like you said, it's a feature that's never been, uh, in a, a WWE or wrestling game for that matter. So to kind of break that boundary and, and bring in a, a new feature such as, such as that, um, I think, yeah, that, 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 that would be really cool. Um, very, very last item here, uh, and I, we talked about the mode in regards to this, but I briefly touched on this. It says, create a referee. I think that this would be a very cool feature, not only like in regards to creating a new referee from head to toe, but if every wrestler could have like a secret attire, like if let's say, um, I'm going to use him because he's a easy example to use in a match like this. For example, I, I go to create a referee mode and it goes, okay, do you want to create a, a fresh new referee or do you want to give a, a WWE superstar a referee attire? So, for example, I go give a WWE superstar a referee attire. I select on a Steve Austin and I give him a referee shirt without the sleeves, right? Or I give it like a, an alternate design. And that doesn't have to take up a slot in my, in my attire slots. But it can be like a hidden uh, attire slot so that every time when you put Austin as a referee in a match, it automatically goes to that attire. Something along the lines of that. It kind of, you know, just trying to give the player options, trying to make the game look different depending on what match you play. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing that uh, in the next rendition of the games. But go ahead, Dan. What do you think? Yeah, much like all the other things we've talked about, it, it, it's just one of those fun little ambient things uh, where you can either import your own face and make yourself a referee or your friend or uh, go in and, like you said, do, do sort of a stock referee. I mean, because I, we've, have we, we've more or less had just sort of a generic referee most, most of the games, right? Yeah. I think they... They just in, didn't. They just institute a female referee in this one, but she was still generic. She wasn't like uh, Jess. In two K twenty. Yeah, not, I think there's a female. I thought there was a female referee in this one. Not that I know of, but I could be mistaken. Weird. I. I mean, I could. I could just be wrong. Um, but that would be cool. But, I, I wouldn't mind that. That would be cool. Yeah, but like, let me let me go in and. And, I'm, I mean, you obviously can't use all, all of them, or the WWE won't let you um, one way or another. Like, you wouldn't be able to use the likeness of Earl Hebner at this point. Right. But if somebody went through and created one, ooh. There you but go. But either way, yeah, you can do, you can have a Hebner show up, a Kyoto, a uh, Scott Armstrong, or take any superstar and give them their own uh, referee outfit. And then... If I do a special referee match and I have uh, Shayna versus Asuka for the women's title and I want to have uh, Becky Lynch as the special ref, and I want her to be in a in, uh, referee outfit, let me do it. Let yeah. me, ma- let me do- doll her up and it'll be fun. No harm, no foul. Yeah, but let me just add, I wouldn't want the referee attire to take up one of the two attire slots in the uh, superstar thread mode. Oh, yeah. You know, no, I, it, it, it should be, and they should be able to do it. 
an independent thing. Yeah. Like a, an external factor. Right. Yeah. And then, real quick, I know that, that, that that's going off topic at this point because we're talking, we were talking about the referees, but I, I thought about this earlier on. Um, if you start doing something where it's where you have those tournaments, I'm just going back to that. Yeah. The tournaments, and you can unlock an attire by beating the thing. Most fighting games, things like Super Smash Brothers or Street Fighter or those, let you change your attire or your colors. So that, like, if you have Ryu versus Ryu, you can change from uh, the, his traditional uh, white gi with the red headband to like a blue gi with a I don't know a black headband. Yeah. Um, and I think that that should really be what we should be striving to go toward with all these superstars in a way where you can get. And I know you aren't crazy about the du- the duplicates. What like what would be the harm of having Becky Lynch in this? I'm just going to keep using Becky. Becky Lynch in this outfit versus Becky Lynch in that outfit. Yeah. If, if people want to do it, whatever. Mortal, but, Mortal Kombat type of thing. Yeah. But so uh, if you have because you can technically do that right now with all the all the different models, so might as well leave it in there for us to do with the different outfits. Um. But, yeah, if I go and I click on Becky, instead of having four, instead of having 15 versions of her just in the select, the generic select screen, uh, have me click on it, and then I can either click, like, the trigger buttons to cycle through her attires, or just give me the, the list like they have right now, but just let me have, like, all of the available attires that they put out. Yeah. Because if we have a couple of different attires for each superstar, then that that would be a lot of fun. If you if you've got Dragon Ball Z New Day outfits in there, and they're wearing the like the the vests, and they're going up against, I'm trying to think who has who else has a fun attire. Um, yeah, I can't think of anybody. Uh, Ricochet. Uh, yeah. They're going up against a ricochet who's in one of his his custom outfits. It's it's just again one of those fun little detail things. It's it's no different really than like big head mode. Yeah, um, I will say this: uh, anybody who knows me, like, or anybody who's played a two K game with me and has played on, and we've played on my PlayStation, they know that if they. Chances are, if you select on a superstar, they are bound to have an alternate attire. I am very much in tune with that. I really like that because uh, it becomes boring when after a while, I'll, I'll use her again just because you've been using her. Becky Lynch, she has the same outfit and it's the same thing and it's the same hairstyle and it's the same, you know, it's the same... Uh, shorts, it's the same boots, it's the same socks, it's the same stockings, it just, it becomes boring, um, which is why for a long time I would go and I would spend hours just creating custom attires and just giving them a new look, um, just because anytime when the match loads up, you feel like something's different, something is unique, it's not just the same thing over and over again, like, um, uh, how much do you remember from uh, WWF Attitude, the PlayStation One game that came out? Oh, Jesus, not a, not not very much. Okay, <laughs> well, um, each superstar had four different attires. So, yeah. for example, like Austin would have his two his knee brace, and then he would have a, an attire where he would have his vest, and he would have the Bloodstone T-shirt. So, uh, it, it wasn't the biggest thing in the game, but just a small little detail of like, oh, crap, that's cool. And, you know, I can have alternating attires. So, but yeah, let me just repeat, just like you said, do not do duplicates. I don't want to see a Becky Lynch WrestleMania attire, Becky Lynch unlockable attire, Becky Lynch this, Becky Lynch 17, 18, 19, 20. Give me one Becky Lynch with multiple... Um, with with different clothing in each option, essentially. Yeah. Um. Well, we have reached the bottom of our uh list. Forty nine items. Uh, uh. Unfortunately, I think uh my biggest fear came true. This list had a lot of duplicates. Um. 
But, uh, yeah, we've covered everything on this list. And um, fair to say that I think that, Dan, for you and I, uh, the one thing that's really sticking out, apart from gameplay or just core mechanics, is the first two items that we covered on the list, which the first one for you was GM mode, and the second one for me was the create a story mode. Um, I don't know. A, a big part of me feels like, you know what? They will take the time to... Because to, to ask 2K to do every single thing on this list is impossible. I feel like that's just... It's not doable. But I think a third or even half the stuff on this list is very doable in a two-year period. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that we'll get most of what we asked for on on these 49 items, or do you think that a lot of these things might be overlooked? I I think that the major ones, I would say probably the stuff in the top 10 are the things they're going to focus on. Yeah. Beyond that, if they have time and resources, they might try to pepper in some of those things. But no, I absolutely wouldn't hold your breath on having the wish list of 49 items or 30 items after all the duplicates uh, all put into the game. Would it be amazing to have that app come out where we can draw the signs? Yes. Will that necessarily happen? I, I, I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Yeah. Are, are we going to get GM mode? Yes. Are we going to get an improved story mode of some sort? Yes. Will we get the uh, branching story story arcs? Hopefully. I think if they're in the if they're even if they're working on making a good story in general, they might put in that effort to at least uh, let it go in a couple of different directions throughout throughout the course. But. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think if we I think if we get those top ten, that's a good enough starting block, especially if they do them well. Yeah, and I think that if they do knock out those first ten things, I think that shows that they're listening. That now they are in tune with. Okay, what do the fans want? We sent out this forum. Everybody punched in their answers. Here are the results. We've crunched the numbers. Okay, what do we work on first then? Uh, again, Dan, we've talked about this before. If a 2K22 comes out, no GM mode in sight, no create a story mode in sight, gameplay is eh, slightly improved. Um, again, I repeat, make or break. So uh, if the intention here is to listen to the fans, they have everything that they need. If they ever wanted answers as to what do these fans need, they got it. It's all right here in these 49 or 30 or 20, whatever, minus the duplicates. They have their answer. It's just the case of are they willing to implement it into the game? So uh, with all that said, uh, this this was a, a very big task to do after all 49 items and sort of uh, spitballing ideas. But um, the second and relatively short segment that we have is that we didn't we didn't really discuss this when the news first broke out about it because we wanted to sort of give it some time. But now that we're here today and we're recording right now, um, until 2K22 comes out, we're going to have a side, non-simulated, more arcade game come out. It is called WWE Battlegrounds. Um, I, 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 I'm on the SmackdownHotel.com right now, so I can read a little bit about it if you'd like. Okay, yes, that would be great. All right, so WWE 2K Battlegrounds, completely new WWE gaming experience that will feature arcade-style action and over-the-top WWE superstar designs, environments, and moves. Uh, scrolling down a little bit more. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So this is essentially the WWE version of apparently two, uh, sorry, NBA 2K Playgrounds. Uh, which I don't, I'm not familiar with, but mm-hmm. it'll feature superstars, legends, and custom superstars, so you'll still get to design your own people. Nice. Uh, players will be able to attack opponents by using chairs, poles, alligators, exploding barrels, and falling cars in cartoon style matches, also featuring explosion, electrified cages, and more. 
um, on here, and it says see the 2K Battleground roster section for more details, but on here, the only people it specifies are Becky, uh, Charlotte, John Cena, Austin, and The Rock. Yeah. It seems, again, we, we, we talked about this when uh, 2K, when we were on the road to 2K20, how we said, 2K, don't be afraid to have some fun. And yep. I think that that's exactly what this game exemplifies. Keep in mind, this is not uh, a 2K. This is not a SmackDown versus Raw. This is not anything that falls into the main timeline. This is something that's along the lines of um, Day of Reckoning or... Um, All Stars, which kind of integrated a little bit more cartoony, fictitious, uh, arcade-like gameplay. I, I, I gotta be honest, Dan. I think that we talked about this. Upon seeing the details in the trailer, am I gonna get this game? Probably not. Um, <laughs> then again, I don't know. I might see some gameplay and go, oh, you know what? This actually looks a little bit fun, just to kind of you know, do something goofy or just have some fun and not have it be all serious and simulated. Uh, it's going to be very broken away from the main series, that's for sure. Uh, it seems like it's just yeah. going to... It seems like this game is just a small distraction until we get uh, the main attraction, which is 2K22. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it's even possible that this, that, that this game is really... Uh, I mean, I don't know exactly how you'd make it a reskin of Playgrounds, but may maybe it's just a really easy game to slap together. <laughs> and so they were like, well, we need something, so what do we got? Well, why don't we take Playgrounds and do a WWE version? Oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah, let's do that. Because if you go cartoony and you do people as like over-the-top models, you don't necessarily have to be the most accurate with the face scans. And so gives you a little bit more freedom. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, but if I was a guessing man, I'd say this is probably going to be one of those games where you probably have 15, 20 playable characters, maybe like seven different um, quote-unquote arenas, um, and maybe like 15 or 20 moves for each wrestler. I, I, don't, I don't take it as, oh, it's going to be this in-depth gameplay or you're going to have all these different... Uh, branching options. I think it's going to be a little bit more um, collected and uh, sort of packaged and thrown together as opposed to, you know, dynamic and out there and different options and whatnot. Yeah. Um. But I mean, uh, judged on everything that you've seen, do you see yourself possibly purchasing Battlegrounds? Um, if it goes on sale for twenty bucks, maybe. Yeah, that, if that's it, it, that's the whole price, probably not. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing too. I mean, if you slap on this game for sixty bucks, especially after two K twenty, I don't even think you. I don't even think it should be at half price. I think like nineteen ninety nine is where it needs to be. Um, just because of the design, like. You have to understand the only reason why we're in this predicament is because of what happened with 2K20. Because at this point, we were supposed to be getting 2K21. So, um, yeah, I would say give it a 1999. It would make for a great uh, holiday game around Thanksgiving and whatnot. Just to sit down with family or friends and just have a nice mix of current and retro legends. And just, just have a little bit of fun. Nothing too serious. So, um, with all that said, Dan, do you have any uh, parting words or remarks about uh, the list or Battlegrounds or anything? Um, I mean, uh, I think that maybe uh, 2K22 should take a lesson from Battlegrounds and I should be able to hit somebody with an alligator. <laughs> um, no joke, when you were talking about all the different weapons that the Battlegrounds has... Uh, I was thinking of that, too, that they should implement, maybe not alligators, but, like, you know, uh, poles and metal pipes, and if they want to be goofy, like, you know, the little lollipops that we got, or the little swords, or whatever that we got, you know, in the Bump in the Night and in the DLC pack, 
Um, and, and I mean, if you don't want to put in like an actual alligator, like Battlegrounds, a nice, a fun, funny little Easter egg might be to have a backstage thing, and there's like one of those inflatable pool floats. Yeah. Alligator that you can pick up and you you bonk your opponent with, and maybe it just kind of loosely stuns them, but. Yeah, or maybe deflates. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, I actually I like that little Easter eggs here and there of stuff that could that you could inter- again, if if we're gonna have matches like that where you go backstage and you can use weapons, it needs to be interactive, not just a room where it's pretty much empty space and you have maybe a chair, a table, and like two other weapons. No, we don't want that. We want something that's very interactive. When because I mean there was a point in the series where every single weapon would do, kind of had like its own physics, like you would use a trash can and all of a sudden the trash can would start bending or um, like just everything was very distinct and, and it wasn't the same. And I think that if you go for the same thing in 2K22, um, you have a winner in, in that department. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so there you go, guys. We have finally concluded our long 49... Uh, compiled list on the uh, for 2k forums make sure to check out the uh, previous three videos where we covered um the other items on that list that we've gone in chronological order uh we just covered a little bit about battlegrounds too as details uh come out we will be covering that um also something that dan and i are very very excited about the last of us part two we've been getting a lot of gameplay trailers and information in regards to that so uh, uh, keep keep an eye on your notifications because we're going to be having some episodes dedicated to that as well. Um, and with all that said, uh, on behalf of Dan, the man, and myself, we hope that everybody during these trying times are staying home and staying safe and taking care of their family, friends, and loved ones. And always remember and never forget, whenever you're in doubt, just turn down the treble and crank up the bass. We'll touch base with you guys next time.